Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Lost Planning the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law. Apparently, not a small law firm in central Minnesota. Apparently, I am not an attorney, nor should anyone think I am, nor should anyone think I'm an attorney, as I. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what pro hack vice even is. I've never heard of it. That's what happened there. That's what happened. It couldn't be any other reason than I just don't know what it is. <laughs> so, let me... Let me offer a correction because, because the soul of integrity, right, is humbly accepting your mistakes, your oversights, your literal inability to have this particular fact and may be in possession of facts which would have led me to believe something else, but that's okay. Right? Because I am certainly happy to be corrected when I'm wrong. I'm like, this is the greatest uh, thing is to be corrected because I get an opportunity to learn something new. Like when I emailed Mark Zaid on, I think it was Monday. What was the date? The 8th. Okay, I emailed Mark on the 8th, politely asking him to come on my show. That was Monday, right? That was Monday. Now, Mark is a busy guy. And guys, I don't think... Yes, I did shave. I shaved earlier in the day. Uh, sorry about that. I apologize. I'll reman soon. It's just... It was getting in my food. Okay. Mark is a busy guy. And make no mistake, I have no intention or desire to make fun of or align Mark Zaid, who I think I've said the entire time is an extremely competent attorney. Right? <laughs> I don't think I've said otherwise uh, at all. So, but I think Mark may have misunderstood me. And so I will demand that Mark Zaid live stream his apology to me as I am live streaming my correction here. <laughs> Let me see if he responds. Uh, nope, he hasn't responded yet. I have asked him to come on the show and laugh about this with me and make fun of me. Because, guys, my ego is so little. Like, <laughs> just, uh, I, if you know me, some of you are newer to my channel. But in the beginning, in the beginning, I've talked about this all the time. People explaining and talking and doing all this stuff are just dummies, right? We're just dummies who happen to know something about, about whatever. Now, let me recount exactly what has happened in this case. Now that I have the factual basis, and we'll talk about why I thought maybe it was something different, okay? So, so, and I'm, I'm, I apologize if I take a pause. Uh, I keep hoping I, Mark Zaid will reply because I can send him a Hangouts link in any moment, all right? But, okay, so I had heard a rumor that Mark Zaid was off the case, all right? I emailed Mark on Monday. I invited him to come on the show and talk about this case or anything else because I didn't, I said, you know, I don't want to compromise any aspect of your case or talk about anything that's not public, you know, nothing like that. I would love to interview Mark Zaid because he's an amazingly accomplished guy. Amazingly accomplished guy. So I would, you know, I would love to have him on the show. And I said, we could talk about whatever. We could talk about comics. We could talk about what he likes to do. We could talk about the Lockerbie bombing case, which is fantastic. The guy's got a Wikipedia page because of his accomplishments. All right. I mentioned the rumor, rumor that he was off the case. He did not respond to me. Now, let me be clear. He's a very busy guy, a much busier lawyer than me. 
with uh, much higher value clients and all that stuff or dollar value clients, I should say. My clients are the most important. Whatever, it, you know what I'm saying here. Very busy guy, very high profile. It's fine that he did not respond to me. In this case, there is nothing to tell me that he is still on as lead counsel and that he will be filing pro hack vice representation. Now, he doesn't have, they don't have to do this, all right? They I'm not saying they did something wrong. Absolutely not. Uh, in other cases I have seen, they will list pro hack vice counsel right, uh, you can see my mouse, right about here. They will list pro hack vice counsel with their attorney number and they will say pro hack vice representation pending even if they haven't filed a motion for pro hack vice. Okay, let's, that's where I'm coming from. Now, I have no way other than asking one of the parties or Mark Wade or the other attorney to find out if, or, or Mark Zaid, sorry, or the other attorney, Daniel Byrne, or I guess Beverly Reeves, if I would have called them for comment, <laughs> I could have done that, I suppose, on a Sunday. Uh, I could have found out if he was still working, if they would release that information to me. A nobody on the internet. So, I am deeply sorry for getting this fact wrong, that I do not possess the ability to know with any concreteness without one of you responding to me. And you didn't, sir. So... Humbly apologize. Now let me talk about Pro Hack Vice a little bit and, and just tell you what Pro Hack Vice is because there does seem to be a little confusion. Um, Edwin Boyette, am, I'm pronouncing that wrong, Edwin. I apologize, it's not personal. He, ha he asked me about um, reciprocity. Reciprocity in, in practice in the Western District of Texas. It has reciprocity. And yes, you can get licensed in the Western District of Texas through reciprocity. However, uh, for an, just an individual case, um, it is a better route to go pro hack vice. Reciprocity uh, is, is licensure in the forum, which means you have all the requirements of licensure. Uh, it's much more expensive. You may have like CLE, continuing legal education requirements that are different than, than in your home forum and stuff. There's no, no reason to do it unless you anticipate having uh, several cases in that forum. If you just have the one, you do pro hack vice representation and that's fine. There is nothing odd or suspicious about this, okay? So I want to put that out there. Not maligning Mr. Zaid. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We might start in a minute. I jest, Mark. I jest. We're going to malign me through you, sir. So pro hack vice representation is a practice where uh, a, a lawyer who's not licensed in a particular forum gets temporarily licensed along with local counsel according to the court's rules. The Western District of Texas has rules uh, that would that basically say uh, a court can set its requirement for local counsel, and so they do. So local counsel has to be present within the forum state, and the, or the forum district, I should say, because this is a district court case, and uh, so they've got someone licensed to practice in the Western District of Texas, and then Mark will... Uh, participate in the case according to their arrangements. All right. So they'll file pro hack vice and he'll be able to represent again. The cases I, I don't do pro hack vice representation because I don't practice in federal district court. I practice locally. I've never represented otherwise in any way. So uh, the pro hack vice filings I have seen have always included the pro hack vice uh, proposed person's information uh, while the pro hack vice was pending. They didn't do it here. I don't know why. I don't care why. What's interesting to me is, uh, and, and this is speculative. I know it's very danger dangerous for a lawyer to speculate while he's running an entertainment show on YouTube. 
that is also mildly educational to people who are so outside of this process that they would have no other way to find this stuff out. But it's interesting to me that if he is lead attorney, as lead attorney tweeting about and providing media comments on the case from pretty much immediately, almost immediately, like as soon as he was reached for comment, he responded that he was on the case. Uh, he was very quick to say that he was he was representing Mark Wade, yet now he needs an extra three weeks. I don't know why. I don't know why Meyer would agree to a three-week extension, um, you know, if, if he's been the attorney from day one. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, unless he has other cases or something that would prevent him from doing this. That's fine. None of that's listed here. And that's okay. This could have all been resolved behind closed doors between Beverly Reeves and, uh, and Daniel Byrne. All right. Perfectly fine for them to do that. And guess what? None of us would have any way of finding that out. So I apologize deeply, deeply apologize for misleading you with my wanton and reckless speculation. No lawyer worth his salt would ever speculate outside of a case that he's not commenting on, I don't think. At least that's what I've been told. But <laughs> here we are, right? Let's see. Uh, how I Drown My Sorrows, Japanese whiskey. <laughs> Just a little bit tonight. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Let me, there are a couple of super chats, which I very much appreciate. And I will check out, uh, I will check this out in just a sec. Here we go. Here we go. Custom song maker says Mark Zaid was on some podcast Friday advertised as Mark Zaid has sued every president in the last 25 years. See what he has in store for Trump. Oh yeah. I mean, if you, you can look at his, uh, his page. He doesn't seem to be a big fan of Trump, but you know, in fairness, Mark Zaid does seem to be a champion of free speech. He talked about it in his uh, bleeding cool comment, bleeding cool, bleeding fool, bounding into comics. I don't remember which one, whichever one he was quoted in. He talked about this being a free speech issue for, for, uh, Mark Wade. So if he is a free, if you're a free speech attorney, you're, uh, on the national level, you're suing presidents. I do believe he also represents public servants. Uh, and by public servants, I mean extremely well-paid uh, professionals in the field of government. And so if they have an employment dispute with the federal government, Mark, uh, Mark Zaid would be suing them as well, as he should do if that's his expertise and specialty. Absolutely. Cheers to him for that. Sue them all, buddy. Hmm. Mm. All right. Oak 1971. I wonder who spammed him on Twitter. No idea. Didn't uh, I'm frankly flattered. I'm very flattered that Mr. Uh, Mr. Zaid took 10 minutes out of his day and watched my video. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then thought it's so necessary to respond. I mean, that's great. Go Jirify. Nick FB. Choose your whiskey. Oh, that's rude. Good. Paul Dozier. You always hear good things about that Japanese whiskey. Care to offer an opinion? Are you talking about this Suntory Royal? You don't have to super chat again, but uh, is this is this this particular one, the Suntory Royal? I don't even know if you can buy it anymore. Um, I got it from my grandfather, who's had it for a while. But, uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, Sketch Therapy, you shared the link. Uh, I retweeted it, and then apparently he got he got um, a little huffy at me, and it looked like it was at you because, because he... I don't know if he doesn't understand how Twitter works uh, or if he just made a mistake. He said he made a mistake, which I expect him... I expect an equal level of apology, uh, but he's muted you, sir. Just so you know, you're on mute. He won't see a 
word of what you say and good luck with life. <laughs> Be properly chastised, sketch therapy. <laughs> Um, this Suntory, uh, whiskey is the Suntory Royal is great. Very smooth. Um, it's got a mellow sort of flavor, good kick to it, but no, not really. It's not a burning scotch or a whiskey, not a burning whiskey at all. Um, it's, it's just a good, smooth, smooth drink that does the job really well. Yes. You can have a recap in just a second. I have a feeling like, uh, I'm going to have to recap this a hundred times. So, um, <laughs> so let me re recap this. Okay. Mark Zaid is the attorney for Mark Wade. Now I released a video earlier, earlier, because I thought based on this filing, asking for an extension of time to file a motion or response from a different attorney who's licensed in Texas. And since it does not mention pro hack vice counsel anywhere. And because I also emailed Mark Zaid and asked him, uh, if he was still counsel and he did not respond, I'm not saying he said anything to contradict it, but he didn't respond. Um, this was filed. So I thought that Mark Zaid was out as Mark Wade's attorney. Turns out he is still in as Mark Wade's attorney. He is, according to himself, lead counsel. Lead counsel. So uh, Beverly Reeves will be mainly there to assist with Texas procedure and with, uh, with doing the filings as local counsel and anything else that needs to be done around. But Mark Zaid is lead counsel according to Mark Zaid. And now I guess we can just, I'll pull up his tweets in just a second and show you uh, what he said. Because there's, again, we're outside of this. All I have are the filings that they do. When, I, when they pop up on Pacer, I can look at them and give you my interpretation, explain what's going on. So, oh, now the other thing that happened is I laughed at the comic pros who've been hanging their hats on the hook of Mark Zaid, thinking that because Mark Wade hired Mark Zaid, that they have an open and shut case, that Meyer will be laughed out of the courtroom and everything else. And I was talking about the Bleeding Cool article that specifically leaves out Meyer's lawyer's qualifications while listing Zaid's qualifications in this specific field, okay? I was making fun of the people who thought that just because they hired Mark Zaid that they would win the case. That's not how lawyering works. Lawyering doesn't care who the attorney is. A good attorney is gonna find the best arguments, certainly. That's great. But if this case goes to trial, and they don't have a good case, it doesn't matter how super your super lawyer is, both of them have super lawyers. It doesn't matter how super your super lawyer is. Uh, if you've got a stinker of a case, you got a stinker of a case. So I was making fun of the pros. Now, I think Mark Zaid thought I was making fun of him. So he got extra salty really quickly. I suggested to him that maybe he misread the situation and uh, I have invited him even after all this a couple times to come on the show and call me an idiot to all of you and make fun of me with his superior knowledge in this field of law. I would love nothing more than that to happen. He can do that any day. Open invitation to him. Open invitation. I am slightly slightly miffed that he suggests that because I didn't mention the pro hack vice counsel that I couldn't know about, that I know nothing about the law, but whatever, I don't really care. Um, it's good to know that we have such a time value disparity and that he's spending it on me. Uh, doesn't bother me in the slightest. I've been called idiots by people I respect more than him. So that's okay. Not a problem for me at all. 
Ryan English says, stop shaving. If I stop shaving, that'll be a mess. That'll be a mess. Lost Cause 78. He's being pretty, been pretty aggressive with anyone that is pro Meyer. So I think he's just being a dummy. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Yeah, sketch therapy. I thought that was a little much him calling you unintelligent. In fact, I thought it was much him calling you unintelligent three times, deleting it twice, and then finally leaving it up there. So... <laughs> So anyway, that's where we are tonight, guys. This is my this is my correction. And in fairness to, again, I've invited him on the show. I've invited Mark Zaid to speak for himself, uh, either in the chat or on here. He's just not, he just is not responding to me. He's responding to other people. So I will take that as a subtle rejection of my, my very, uh, <laughs> my very overt advances. Um, he doesn't have to say no for me to understand he means no. <laughs> mm. So I'm going to pull up his Twitter because I can't have him on here and I'm going to let him explain to you how dumb I am, which is, I mean, again, I don't care. Uh, I'm happy to be wrong. Like people don't realize this. We're wrong all the time about all sorts of things, right? Like everybody is wrong about things and we learn by having these mistakes and corrections. So it doesn't bother me to be wrong. Uh, I don't know why he's posting about it on his personal Facebook page. We'll pull that up too. That's a little interesting. Um, because he can't interact with me there or call anyone who knows me, uh, like make fun of me to anyone who knows me there. But uh, he's, he's pretty, I mean, he's really mad. It seems. It seems. Maybe he's not really mad. Oh, you deleted the tweets. Okay, okay. I don't, again, I don't want to, again, facts I don't have. It just said that I couldn't respond to his deleted tweets. So, uh, whew. Don't want to, again, don't want to malign anybody. Apparently, if I get a fact wrong, um, the, the sticks come out. <laughs> That umbrella guy says he's salty because he couldn't get Eigel on the case. Gojirify says, when are you going to bring on Mark Zicada, be on Mick Zicada's show? <laughs> uh, my alter ego is Rick Nikita, apparently. Um. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's, uh, let's pull up his stuff. Let me see if I can do this without screwing up everything in my life. Uh, okay. Let's whoops. Here we go. Where are we? So if I lay this all the way to the bottom there, look at that. I did it right. I did it right. So this is a uh, this is an archive.com screenshot. I I'm not on Mark Zaid's Facebook page uh, or anything, and I don't encourage anyone to do anything to Mark Zaid uh, outside of whatever you want to do. You know, like responding to him on Twitter or whatever. Go, you know, that's fine, but don't do it on my behalf. Uh, I don't want anyone to bother this guy. I I think that he should still come on the show. I thought he should come on the show and make fun of me live. And he he said I already put it all over social media. I don't know if he knows exactly like how trust and uh, and charisma work. But um, I don't think he made an effective case uh, for people who don't already agree with him. But, you know, that's fine. That's his that's his way of doing it. This is my way of of talking about it. So. Yeah, it's sketch therapy. I, I do think he was acting a little unprofessional with you, for sure. For sure. Okay, so here we go. Can I make this a little bigger? I'm going to make this a... Just so we can focus on his words here. Um, there. So you guys can see. All right. So this is the roast 
Rakeda Law. The, guys, I have never had th someone this expensive roast me to the world. So here you go. This is a first for the channel. Hopefully not the last. I, oh, I love when people do this. I really do. I really love when people uh, roast me over something like this, especially. So, because we, we all, this is a great thing. We get to see how this turns out, don't we? Don't we? Like, we'll know there are three big possibilities in this case. Wade wins, Meyer wins, or settlement. Meyer probably wins. All right? There are three big cases. So we get the acid test. I don't know if you guys realize like how much I put out. <laughs> we'll just cut it there. I'm going home. <laughs> how much uh, it is to put out these opinions on what I think. I think Meyer's got a great case. Now, if if they go to court and lose, I mean, I could certainly be wrong. There could be some uh, good arguments made. Um, the judge could be in a bad mood. Any number of things could make me wrong. Absolutely. But I think Meyer's got a good case. And I think there's a little bit of risk to the fact that I'm putting my name attached to that opinion. Absolutely. But we get an acid test and we'll get to see who's right. And Mark Zaid won't get to blame anyone else if he's wrong. I happen to think he's wrong. I assume... Uh, Meyer's attorney thinks he's wrong, but we'll see. All right, so here comes the roasting, the roasting of me. This is from Mark Zaid. Gosh, I wish I could pull up that picture. People on the internet can be such morons. Apparently, Mark Wade really brings them out too. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. What really amazes me is the idiot, Nick Ricada. He doesn't tag me, which is a little rude. Spreading the story is or was dun 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 still am <laughs> you can't you can't unlawyer me by the via the internet mark zade a lawyer not a very good one i guess <laughs> seems seems to be a hasty generalization there my friend i remain lead attorney for mark wade great perfect that i i couldn't be happier about that in all honesty like i uh, this is not devastating news. Okay, I am not licensed in the state of Texas, You, but our, it's the Western District of Texas that you need to be licensed in. Surely you know that, super lawyer. That means I needed to retain local Texas counsel, which I did. Great. They appropriately filed the motion for extension and will soon be filing a ProHack Vice motion, which will seek my admission to the court proceeding. Perfect. Nothing wrong with this. Any attorney worth their salt would understand this process and not speculate as Mr. Ricada did in his blog. One, I do understand this process. That's fine. Tried to verify the facts independently, but couldn't. Okay, so I speculated. I am so sorry. It doesn't mean I don't understand ProHack Vice, although I don't practice... Uh, in federal court, and I have never had occasion to file pro hack vice. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Um, if the filing for the motion for extension without my being on it represents anything, it shows that no one should take anything Mr. Ricada writes or says without a grain of salt. Listen to that terribly constructed sentence. Listen to this. This is like the worst. Okay, first of all, it's not a blog. Sir, how dare you? How dare you call this a blog? This is a YouTube channel. And you will get it right and you will respect me. Two, how would your co-counsel filing the motion for extension without you being on it show that no one should take anything I write or say without a grain of salt. You botched your own insult, you dummy. What were you doing? With a grain of salt. You should take what I say with a grain of salt is the expression. You botched it. You can edit this. This is Facebook. It's not even Twitter. 
But what would filing a motion for extension say at all about what I say, an unrelated lawyer a thousand miles away? Where's your logical connection to this? You're supposed to be a professional super lawyer, and you're talking like an angry, salty teenager. What happened? What happened to you? I told people to respect you. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you ruining my integrity and telling people that you're good at this? That's nonsense. What are you doing? He has no clue what he is talking about, especially in this case. Do I? You just told them not to take my stuff with a grain of salt. You implied that your fi or your co-counsel's filing of a motion for extension without you on it means that you should not take what I say with a grain of salt, but you should give it credence. What contradiction is this? Your Honor, I request that you strike the statement as misleading and confusing. I don't know the question. <laughs> so, so there we go. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this, I don't know what he's trying to say. I don't know why he's so mad about this. Like, what is making him so mad that someone with, with 10,000, this guy has 40,000 Twitter followers and can probably get on any major news media station any day of the week. And instead, he's incoherently frothing on Facebook to his tiny, to his friends group. I don't know how many people are in his friends group. I don't know. He's got 29 likes, though. That's good. Couple shares. Here we go. Uh, and you are so hard to get a hold of. I'm sure you had no choice but to make crap up. Pretty much. I sent him an email uh, six days ago and he didn't respond. Now, let me clarify with that email. I tweeted to Mark Zaid and invited him on the show. He said, please send me an email. Sounds fun. I sent him an email. He didn't respond. You invited the email. You asked me to contact you in that medium and you didn't respond. How is that my fault? Wait, he is correct? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Wait, how many negatives are in here? Read it one more time. All right, let's check it out. Okay. So, we're going to break this down sentence by sentence. So, here's the... N if this represents anything. Okay. Okay. So, if it represents anything. It shows that no one should take anything I write or say without a grain of salt. Isn't it with a grain of salt? Wait a minute. No, I don't know about this. No one should take it without a grain of salt. Trying to figure this out. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm missing. Let's see. No one should take it without a grain of salt should mean that one should take it with a grain of salt? That's what you're saying? Hmm. Let me consider this. Let me consider this. I don't know if the double negative works in this instance. Does it? Does it? Hmm. Let's, let's work this out. Help me out live. Again, I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> I don't think those two negatives cancel out, cancel out. Hmm. <laughs> 
He's using a double negative to say that people should take what you say with a grain of salt. Why wouldn't he just say that, though? That's such a weird thing. A again. Here. Here we go. Look at this. I've got the... Oh, man, you can't see it very well. I'm not, I'm not sold on this double negative, guys. <laughs> so no one should take, oh, I've got to, I've got to parse this out. This is too much. This is too big brain for me, guys. Too big brain. No one should take anything Mr. Ricada writes or says without a grain of salt. I don't think that's appropriately worded. I don't think so. I mean, you're telling me it's a double negative. But it's not a double negative on the same part of the sentence. Yeah, double negatives are fine, right? Like, but I don't think these two negatives are on the same focal point of the sentence. I don't think it works this way. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I need more fuel for this conversation. <laughs> Mithrin Emrys, I believe you. Here we go. Here we go. I, I missed a super chat. I'm going to get to this one first and then to Mithra and Emrys. Mr. Smith says nobody should super chat Nick without giving money. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Mithra and Emrys says <laughs> no one should take it without a grain of salt means everyone should take it with a grain of salt. No one without everyone with. I mean, I guess, I guess I don't like that at all. God, what a terrible sentence. Nullis Specialis says, saying without no salt would be a double negative. See, that's what I would say, without no salt. But this, this seems wrong to me. It, it hurts me in the core of my being. Lydia Schwitz says, Mark Wade, has anyone really ever, has anyone really been far even as decided to use even go want to do look more like? Uh-oh. What? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Mithra and Emrys, thank you. It's unclear phrasing and should be written to clarify. I don't think he considered that I would be yelling at him live on TV when he wrote this. <laughs> Guys, I told you. I told you that Mark Zaid was going to roast me live. He's going to do it with his own words. <laughs> Has anybody really ever been so far decided as to do what more people more should look like? I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> Kikagazumi says, quick, you're too sober for this. Have a drink. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mark Zaid, you win this round, sir, with your disgustingly offensively constructed sentence. You have outwitted me. How did you know I would do this? <laughs> Guys, he's the best. I have... I have said nothing but positive things about Mark Zaid until this stream and it comes back and gets me. Oh, wait. Here, let me uh, let me rephrase the or retitle this. Let me retitle this. Uh, Mark Zaid roasts me on my own show without even not being here. Wait, is that right? How many double negatives? Doesn't? Roast me on my show without even not being here. Is that right? We're going to put that. That's going to be it. I don't care if it's right. There we go. <laughs> 
It doesn't have to work. That's what you're missing. It doesn't have to work. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. So Zachary Taylor says, at least they're talking about what an expensive big shot attorney you are. You might want to correct this guy on Twitter too, by the way. Done. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Hot Snodge says he's right about not having a clue. None have been in the filings. <laughs> James Lawrence. Now this, should I be concerned with this? I know some people who could take care of this. What does he even mean? <laughs> Take care of what? <laughs> Wait, does that mean they, that they would hire Zaid? I don't know. In the context, it's very strange. <laughs> Mark Zaid, here is the idiot's video. Listen to how mad this guy is. I call people idiots all the time. All the time, does he? Maybe it's a lawyer thing. Maybe it's a lawyer thing. Mithrin Emrys says, it is sloppy writing that renders a generic cliche phrase more complicated than it should be. That sounds like a lawyer, right? He's increasing word count. Word count is billable hours. Mithrin, you're in law school. You'll figure that out soon enough. <laughs> Have you been far? No? Maybe? Yes? <laughs> Zachary Taylor won't even watch my video, which I find rude. But here's the weird thing. I did post a comment, and he did. Mark Zaid posted a comment on my other video, and I pinned it right to the top. Right to the top. I don't know if these people understand that I'm trying to bring you the story of what's otherwise a closed-door process. So I don't care if I'm wrong. I just want to bring the story to you. So yes, tell me that you're still counsel. You could have just emailed me and I would have, I would have said it the whole time. It would have been much easier. Now I'm here doing this at midnight. <laughs> so Mark Zaid's comment is pinned on the other channel. Absolutely. As it should be, it is a correction, and I always, always correct my misstatements when they are brought to my attention. Always. Because I'm just a person, and I'm happy to be corrected so that I'm not wrong in the future. Okay? Silly people. Download it so I have it in case he deletes it. Why would I delete it? What? What world do these people live in? Why would I delete that video? The video is still fine. It's my opinion based on the facts that I have. What a weirdo. Done. Ah! Zachary Taylor did view my video. I followed method three. Oh, didn't want to have to install anything, and I can send it to you if it mysteriously disappears before you have a chance to grab it yourself. The mystery. <laughs> Nullis Specialis says, replace no one with nobody, and you realize it's not a double negative statement. It's saying not a single person should take it without a grain of salt. So are you saying, Nullis, that I'm right? I, th I don't know. I think I might be right on that one still. I know you guys are telling me that it's a double negative, but I, my, my inner English is telling me the opposite. I don't want to focus on it, though. I, will, I don't want to focus on it. I don't want to focus on it. Mithra Nimra says, not really. Our LRW profs are big on clarity and simplicity. Biggest challenge I had in my writing classes thus far. Yeah, mine mine actually were too, to their credit. Even though, even though I went to a low-tier law school, watch out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's so good. My writing professor was a guy named Steve Wang. He's a really good guy. Uh, and he valued uh, brevity, simplicity, and clarity. Absolutely. It never came through in anyone's writing. Uh, but that was the value. Um, so good. Uh, 
Nick, just curious about Zaid stating you should have known better. Is that true? H how would I have known better? Zaid said, now listen, listen to the logical leaps that this guy is making. Because he's, criti he's critical of my logical leap. My logical leap is as follows. A different attorney than Mark Zaid filed a motion for an extension. My brain, based on my experience, is that when someone has an attorney who then, for whatever reason, stops being their attorney and a new attorney is brought in, that attorney takes time to get up to speed. So my brain said that Mark Zaid is out because I don't understand why Mark Zaid would need a three-week extension since he's been talking about being Wade's attorney from the onset, okay? So when I see new counsel filing for a three-week extension, my brain says they must not have him anymore. And I think it makes more sense for Wade to hire local Texas counsel rather than to hire a guy in Washington who's going to have extra costs associated with representation. I think he probably would get cheaper and more effective, no slight to Zaid, but I think he would get cheaper and more effective representation locally. I figured this was the right logical move. That's all. So my brain says that Zaid was out, no judgment there, no reason. Uh, Zaid's really expensive. Um, I think he's probably much more expensive than the co-counsel he's hired which is fine. That doesn't mean much of anything. Zaid works in DC. DC is one of the highest per capita income cities in on earth um, because all of government is there, right? And the average income in DC is monumentally jacked up by all of those government employees. And Zaid represents those guys. He's very expensive. So logically, I thought he was out. I was wrong. I was wrong. Now, Zaid's logical leap is that because my brain came to a conclusion, it meant I didn't even comprehend what ProHack Vice was. What? You're criticizing my logic based on that? I guess you can do whatever you want, but man, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, Carbonite says, yo, Nick, you've been doing this for nearly a year. Is there anything surprising about internet famous? Also, should I drink McAllen or Laphroaig? Uh, drink Laphroaig over McAllen. McAllen is like, yeah, it's got the name, but just drink Laphroaig. It's, it's better for you. Mithrin Emmer says, it's ambiguous at best, misleading at worst. Uh, let's see, Mithrin Emmer says, Zed is making the mistake. Oh, I think you mean you mean Zed. Zaid is making the mistake of assuming you are in possession of all the information he himself has. Isn't that a rookie mistake? I mean, it's it's just a it's just a logic error. <laughs> like, obviously, I can't know if they don't tell me. But that's that's fine. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me being wrong. I want the information to be correct. So I'm happy to have the correction. In fact, in fact, uh, we'll go on and I will continue being corrected. Get him! He got a GIF response. This is Facebook. This is Boomer Hour, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't talk about being internet famous. You're right. I didn't. The weirdest thing about being internet famous is I was live streaming the other day and someone uh, sent a chat that they knew people in my area, that their family was in my area. And as it turns out, we're family. That person, I, I talked to them afterwards and we're like actually in-law related family, not like close or anything, but, uh, and I would have no cause to have met this person, but through, he's, he's like a second cousin or something to my wife. So pretty cool, uh, finding someone from across the country who, um, is cousins with my spouse and uh, and their relatives live like uh, like I run by their house when I go for runs. That's the weirdest part of Internet Famous so far. But other than that, uh, also being, re you know, having General Mills respond to my tweet was pretty cool. <laughs> Nick Riccata says, uh, I will protect you. I get angry when I'm green. I'm also stuck like this for three months. <laughs> 
We are comic to gate says Nick is Zade framing this as a free speech case so he can get CBLDF to pay for Wade's defense. Maybe uh, that's the comic book legal defense fund. He might be trying to do that. Um, and if he does, I mean, he gets to charge whatever and that's a good deal for him. So hopefully he gets that for his sake. Uh, hopefully for Wade's sake too, because uh, it's going to be expensive. Um, he's also, but to be, to be charitable and fair, he's also framing it as a free speech case because there's an idea that tortious interference can be overcome with the free speech defense. My client has every right to say true things to other people about this other person. That's one of the big defenses they're going to go with. It's forecasted. I don't think it's as solid of a case here. That's been a, a big thing in like employment cases. But in those cases, you still have some sort of um, right or duty or responsibility to make the statements in the first place. Like one employer calling a former employer and asking for information. Now, if AP had called Mark Wade and said, hey, Mark, you're an industry vet. Um, we're going to publish with this guy, Richard Meyer, and we would like to know if that's a good idea. And then he started railing on him. Well, then he's privileged in making those statements. And then you have a whole different standard. You go to a very high level defamation standard, which is a falsehood stated with actual knowledge of the falsehood. That's a different story. But, but I should be clear that those cases that I've found that involve um, that defense, that defense is in tortious interference with prospective economic relationships. Because notice I said a, a, a future employer calling a former employer. So these are prospective job deals that are happening that are getting knocked down. Those are the ones that where that happens. I don't know that this is has been applied as a valid defense in an actual tortious interference with a contract, with an existing contract, because there's not a lot of case law to support that. Now, I have not done exhaustive research in Texas, but I have tried to do a good, better than a very high level research case looking through the appellate course or the appellate cases on this subject. And my opinion still stands. I think Meyer's got a good case. I think Zaid has a rough defense, especially when we start talking about AP's statements, um, Mark Wade's own state statements. I think that's going to be a big factor in this case that's going to go against Mark Wade. So, uh, and, and I think that their trump card is that they're going to say that Meyer made defamatory statements about Wade. And I don't think the statements Meyer made about Wade are actually defamatory. So I think they've got a big uphill case. I could be wrong, but in my research, that's what I've come up with. And I'm very forward about that. But that's why he's claiming it's a free speech case. Uh, the other ulterior motive may be ulterior. Sorry, not ulterior. The ulterior motive may be getting the comic book legal defense fund to fund the case because that would be a huge, huge benefit for Wade uh, because, I mean, Zade's going to be very expensive. Papa Smurf 010. Texas is a good place to try this, I think. Texas is a good place to try this. Does Zade acting like an angry child damage his case? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Now let me um let's see what Zaid has said on Twitter. Well, I mean right up front, we know why he's not arguing with me. He says he's got a quote from Mark Twain that says never argue with stupid people, they will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. And yes sir, I will. I dare you to come on here and get drugged down to my realm of stupid. I will pummel you into the dirt. <laughs> Mithra and Emrys, yeah, I uh I have the I have all states and all federal on my Westlaw uh subscription. So I do have um I can do I I have done Texas research and can do Texas research. 
Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I don't, I don't have uh, secondary sources on this stuff and I don't have, um, you know, like trial court motions and, and the trial court documents, but I don't know what I'd find on there currently. Uh, the appellate case is probably sufficient so far. Okay. So, so let's see what he has been tweeting about me because I, I have vanity issues, I think. Oh, uh, not what I'm looking for. Okay. Here's what we want. This one. This one is me. Yeah, I don't know uh, if Comic Book Legal Defense Fund would mess with this because they'd be going one creator against another, which would make, uh, which would bring maybe issues with their charter. I don't know. Um, and I don't know. I don't know anything about how they operate, but uh, it's possible. Okay, so back to the Mark Zaid roasting Ricada Law. <laughs> no, uh, so let me get back real quick. Sorry, this is bouncing around because I didn't plan to do a live stream. I was going to talk about something only tangentially related to this tonight. I was going to just do a video quietly and release it for you guys about tortious interference in a different case. Um, I might talk about it later in the stream, but for now, um, I, I just wanted you to know why I'm bouncing around is because I had no plans for live stream. It's a Sunday night. I was just going to chill and, uh, eat some ice cream and then fall asleep on my couch and then get up and go to bed. That's, that's my life and I love it. So, um, the, uh, internet famous thing. I want to get back to that for just a second. Cause this, this is blowing my mind. Like why this dummy is talking to me at all is so, it's so weird. It makes no sense. I live in the middle of nowhere. I can pee outside pretty much anywhere on my property and no one would know. So like that's where I live. I practice in a town with 15,000 people uh, on a good day. And so having some... DC attorney who's sued Libya, like responding to me in anger and hostility is great. This is great. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't express enough like how funny it is that I now have a big enough platform um, and that I'm hoping to grow. Tell your friends. I'm not shy about it. Uh, I got to, I got to 10,000 subs in under a year. I want to get to a hundred thousand by next year. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I want to do it. So if you like this stuff, please share it. There's my shilling and I'm done. And I'm done. I am humbled and constantly awed by who will respond to me. Because, you know, uh, prior to prior to a year ago, um, I could say the same stuff and not, not get... You just don't have any platform for it. So having this guy respond on this and being involved in like tangentially involved in one of the biggest uh, free speech cases in comics that that's happened in recent memory. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's great. It's weird. And I don't make any, I, I no idea how this all happened. So, okay. All right. Mark Zaid back to the roast. I am shocked. This guy is an attorney. Doesn't, un I don't know what that abbreviation is. If I had a law license, I would. Doesn't understand basics of needing local counsel when lead attorney is not licensed in relevant state. No, I understand it very well. I understand it, uh, Mark Zaid, because I have to refer people to other counsel all the time because I don't do that. I don't practice outside of my jurisdiction. I've, I have too many kids at home to travel around. So I refer those cases out happily. Guys, if you need help finding a lawyer, shoot me a message. I might know someone. Uh... But yeah, so no, I understand it. I don't do it, but that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. Um, I continue to be at Mark Wade's attorney. Well, good. Oh, wait, I lied. It's a tinny. Sorry, a tinny. Uh, good, good. Be his attorney. Provide competent representation. Never wanted anything less for anyone in the world. 
If this video demonstrates anything, it is a reminder that morons tweet and not to believe what you read and hear. Now that's much more concise than his Facebook post. Silly. I don't know why he didn't go with that language. Oh, and he, he quoted my, uh, me saying I'm a dummy. Ha! Mark, I beat you to your own argument. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, not the best ratio, Mark. This guy has 40,000 followers. 40,000 followers, and he's got 26, 5, 28. I mean, I think you can do better, Mark. Okay, so then, uh, <laughs> the roast is going on again. Uh, sketch therapy. No, this one he's talking about me. This one's me. Um, Junior says, nice YouTube channel you got there, champ. Interesting taste in videos too. Okay, so he's got some liked videos. Now this apparently is his YouTube channel. I, I mean, he may be a bigger attorney, but I'm a way bigger YouTube presence. <laughs> his liked videos. I, I don't know. This guy's got to have a kid, right? Like that's what's going on here. I don't put any stock in this, but uh, you know, some people have looked this up. I don't like that YouTube saves liked videos. I think that's weird, but um, he's got to have a kid. I'm guessing who clicked, you know, it was like on his phone or tablet and clicked the like videos. I don't think we should put any stock into that. Super Action Fight says, we are just excited to find out Mark Wade is going to pay for your services. Seven fifty an hour. How can a comic book writer not afford that? Well, that doesn't seem very friendly. Uh, that's why I cyberstalked. I mean, looked you up before following and co-founding the fan club. Oh, Junior's posted that again. Uh-oh. I watched the video. Glad to see you're still his lawyer. Is there any info you can add without breaking anything that needs to remain silent? I'm watching this case out of curiosity and a dislike and a dislike the majority of attacks that Comicsgate supporters and members are responsible for. Okay. Uh, I didn't respond to that person. Cry more. <laughs> Thank you, Chris W. That one's funny. Please confirm or deny that Wade has also retained veteran attorney Alan Zershowitz. Casca <laughs> uh, 52 you can turn off people being able to see your like videos in your settings. Hindsight is 2020, I guess. Uh, Splato Delgado says, Morons tweet sounds like Zaid is working on closing arguments against his client. Nick Riccata. <laughs> uh, let's see. Splato Delgado says, This guy, you should not be so dismissive of your betters. Well, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself better. Differently abled. Mr. Gobot says, this has to be the dumbest of all the comic skate replies I've seen in a while. Why don't you look up Zade's literal billion dollar accomplishments and reputation within his field versus what looks like Riketa's strip mall operation? <laughs> Sucker, I closed that office down. I work from home. What's up? <laughs> and it's Plato Delgado. Yet this billionaire lawyer spends his time hand-wringing over Nick Riketa's YouTube videos. He's on the case. <laughs> Macho Mang. Post a meme from Friday. Good. Good. Uh, this isn't, like, the biggest defense. Guys, my favorite, my favorite person is Rick Rotman. Have, do you guys follow Rick Rotman? He has the hottest takes on how to be an e-business. He, let me show you. Oh, he took it off. He took it off. No, Rick, Rick, Rick. Come on. A couple days ago, Thursday at the, at the earliest, Rick Rotman still had on his profile that he was an e-commerce expert after making some of the dumbest comments I've ever heard about e-commerce. But, you know, I guess he's no longer an e-commerce expert. So I'm glad he took that off. Uh, I gl I'm glad he took that off of his profile. Um, okay, so here we go. 
How dare you, sir? Mr. Rackets is a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> Triggered. I'm more suspect that your local council is in the same building as DNC's attorney. Did they date? Is she going to make arrangements to burn down his office? Whoa. <laughs> I hope not. I hope none of those things are true. She would probably have to disclose an existing rate relationship with opposing or a previous relationship with opposing counsel. Um, that may be a conflict. I don't, I don't know. I'm not familiar with Texas rules of uh, ethics. Um, so Rick Rotman, let's see what he says about me. He has a side gig as a debate moderator. Yep. And cinnamon whiskey drinker. Ew, no. So it's all good. It is all good, sir. It is. Guys, uh, you're with me here. Heart to heart, honest moment. The past year, leading up to even the past month, has been some of the happiest times in my life. <laughs> of course it's all good. I am having so much fun doing this work that, uh, you know, I only wish I could have been doing it sooner. But that's not how life works, right? You, you work and you build up to something and then you take a path and then you take another path and it gets you to where you are. Here I am. I'm in a good time. Will I have bad times in the future? Likely. I've had bad times and good times in the past. This, this past couple months has been great. Great. And moderating debates with cinnamon whiskey? Whew, that's fun. <laughs> Says the guy who made his fame being a champion for whistleblowers but hasn't done jack to defend them when they come out and face the light. Whoa! Shots fired on the professional integrity. Now you're a dude defending an overly privileged white old man who can't hear someone say no or I disagree. That's brutal. That's brutal. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. Mark Wade managed to find a lawyer who is just as much of an obnoxious jack, <laughs> jack butt. Whoa. To other people online as he is. Wow. Maverick says, if this case goes to Supreme Court, something tells me it will not go well for Team Wade's aid. So Wade is what, 20K deep into this own clown already? He's not getting the reaction I think he thought he would get. I don't think so. Kika Kazumi says, we like you too, Nick. I'm glad to have found this stream. I'm glad you found it too, buddy. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. <laughs> the melting point, you, YT says, you are literally my hero. Thanks, man. I will try not to let you down. We can never meet, though, if I'm your hero. That's And, and I... I hope if we have the chance to meet in person that you will humbly allow me to resign from being your hero because they say you should never meet your heroes. So, uh, and I would prefer to meet people because uh, I don't ever want to be the guy who doesn't want to meet people. <laughs> have you consulted Jamal Eigel? Jesse the body says, Zade, woo! <laughs> Mike Penisberg. Hey, idiot, if you're staying... This is just a few minutes ago. You're staying on ProHack Vice and why the three-week extension? Surely you knew from the onset you weren't licensed in Texas. I think it's a fair question. Like I said, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it's deliberate or, or shady. I don't have information that... It, maybe it is shady, but I have no information that it is. Um, that, that what he's doing is shady. And I don't, I don't think I implied that it was. I have not... This is the weird thing. I never attacked Zade's integrity or character or ability. Why he's this mad about this is a mystery to me. Thantra says, just glad to be here laughing at all this. Me too. Let's see his tweets and replies because he's got more than just that. We're going to have to go. Not much. I oh, So here's, here's this one. Oh, wait, here's his thread. I, I missed his thread. Thread below. Okay. Uh, every game played. Nick Riccada has had his law license for three years and has never tried a case. Jamal Eichel, Zade's Facebook page. Okay. Okay, Jamal. I guess. <laughs> I have had my law license for three years. Well, actually longer than that. A little bit longer than that. Three, three years and uh, when did I get it? Five months? Four months? I, four months. Three years and four months, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Have I tried a case? I've never had to go to trial. You're right. Most cases don't go to trial. And in three years of practice, all of my cases uh, have ended up outside of trial. We have settled them. We have worked to plea agreements. And uh, I, to my knowledge, my clients are quite pleased with the responses that I, or with the results I've gotten them. So yeah. Uh, but Jamal Eigel, I know that you know that only trials matter in law and you are the authority. So, so yes. <laughs> So here we go. Here is Zade's thread that he is unleashing on me. Now, he responded to sketch therapy um, because he incompetently, he incompetently and without enough research, without, he speculated on how he should respond and he failed miserably. Um, <laughs> So he responded to sketch therapy rather than me. All right. So, but know that he has since clarified in a series of tweets that he is not following at all because he's very busy, um, that he was responding to me and not sketch therapy. So I don't want any confusion. Again, I don't want to malign or impugn um, Mark Zade's character. So here we go. Mark Zade says, you are a complete idiot. Crying laugh face. <laughs> Do you actually practice law for a living? Well, I mean, a little bit. <laughs> Trying to do it less every day. I love how you ridicule and call dumb comic book pros regarding the fact that... Does this guy know how to speak English? Okay. Someone tell me how I'm wrong in misreading that sentence. All right. Let's see here. I need to make sure that I'm not crazy. That sentence doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to read it the way I think he means it. I think he means it this way. I love how you ridicule and call dumb comic book pros regarding the fact that I was Mark Wade's attorney. I guess that's what he means, but that is horrendously worded. Horrendously worded. I'm not calling them dumb for thinking you're a good attorney. You idiot. You idiot. I'm calling you dumb now. I'm still maintaining that they're dumb. Now let me tell you why, you dummy that you're dumb, okay? You're dumb because I was making fun of them for trying to make fun of Meyer's attorney, who's a pretty accomplished litigant, I'm sure you know, right? That's what I was making fun of, you idiot. You stupid small man in Washington, D.C., charging a fortune to represent public servants. Your ego is out of this world giant and you misread this situation so bad because your ego is so fragile that it's actually funny. Okay? Let me break it down for you, dummy. If you read the Bleeding Cool article, they represented you as an expert in tort law. As if you being an expert in tort law is different than any other personal injury expert. That's not... That's not me picking on you. That's me picking on Bleeding Cool for being stupid and Jamal Eigel for being mentally incompetent. If Jamal Eigel murdered someone, I don't think he could go to court. That's how dumb he is, okay? So listen, dummy, can you follow along? I know you're a big lawyer in a big town with a big brain from a big school. I'll try and keep my small town mind to keep up with yours. But please, tie a rope around yourself so I can drag you behind if you can't walk along. I'm making fun of them 
for ignoring the accomplishments of Meyer's attorney. Because Meyer's attorney is a 35-year senior partner at a litigating firm in Texas in the district where he's filing. Not a guy in Washington who represents people on all sorts of issues, but this is what this guy does. And I know you're not mis mis uh, I know you're not underestimating him, but they are. That makes them stupid. And their entire defense of Wade was not that he was right, but that he hired you. They have logic issues, you dummy. Do you follow? Do you follow me yet? Should I slow down? You egotistical pile of trash. You dumb person who misread this situation so badly that you had the opportunity to come on here and make fun of me live to my own audience and show me that I'm wrong. But instead, you went on Twitter and made yourself the idiot to anyone who's following along. And it's embarrassing because you're obviously a smart guy. You're probably a better lawyer than me. I don't have any issue saying that. But here you're stupid and it's really sad. Let me, let me get a couple of these super chats in. What is wrong with people? <laughs> George E says, I have zero knowledge of US law, but I can tell that this is golden. Thanks for a hilarious stream after work. Thank you, George. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Siren Jag says, just once call him an idiot like Ren Wood from Ren and Stimpy, please. You idiot. You idiot. <laughs> Mithra and Emrys says, if he or his associate intern, whomever, writes his briefs like that, I know five judges in Houston that would kick it back to him. Absolutely. I mean, just, 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 Zaid, just pause for a moment and check yourself. I'm just a guy on the internet making people smile, hopefully, every day. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. And I have a little bit of a legal education and a little bit of legal experience. And I like to make things that they didn't pay tens of thousands of dollars for accessible so that they don't have to just sit and listen to boring people like you. <laughs> That's all. Chowderhead D says, if Zade is such a big shot, then why is he arguing with everyone on Twitter? It would be funny if he implodes like Wade. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. But let's see. Hey, counselor, I'm not licensed in Texas. I, I didn't think you were, but you know, you also might be licensed in the Western District of Texas. You practice all over, including in Scotland. I don't know your license status. Not really relevant. <laughs> <sighs> How good is University of Rochester and Albany Ricada Law? I don't know. Is that where he went to school? I figured he's got to be a Harvard guy. Is he not a Harvard guy? Uh, does anybody... <laughs> John Sislowski says, Love it when lawyers rage reply makes it worth it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Does anybody know where he went to school. Cause if here's the fun thing, funny thing, uh, someone made fun of my law school. Let me, let me break the secret in case you guys don't know. I'm not quite, I'm not quiet about any of this stuff. If you have a question about me, just ask, I'll tell you the truth. I have no reason to lie about my life. My life is wonderful and I love it. I have my struggles like everybody else, but overall on balance, it's, it's good, right? It's good. Uh, I went to William Mitchell School of Law. William Mitchell merged with Hamlin School of Law and became Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. The articles that talk about their merger, uh, talk about how they're both low tier law schools. Yeah. Inside Minnesota, William Mitchell is a respected law school. Outside Minnesota, no one cares about it. Okay. Hamlin, at the time that Mitchell and Hamlin merged, which was after I graduated, Hamlin was at like 70 students enrolled. Mitchell was at like 340, 350. They merged. It happens. There's, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a big crunch 
in education and legal education. They're looking for dollars. They're reducing their requirements. Probably how I got into law school. I'm a bad student. Okay. <laughs> Terrible. I have been my whole life. Uh, I learn plenty. Do the, the, the schoolwork ticks me off. So I was bad in undergrad because I was a writing major and I just didn't care. No, uh, no malignment, but they reduce their admission requirements so that more people could come in because they're bleeding and hemorrhaging money. Uh, go, this is a real problem in education because they've priced themselves out of the market. What do I know about economics though? That's all a side story. So Mitchell is a low tier school. Absolutely. Don't care. And thankfully they merged with Hamlin. So now I didn't go to Mitchell Hamlin. I went to William Mitchell. So I don't give them money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an alumni of Mitchell Hamlin. What are you talking about? But here's the thing. William Mitchell's School of Law has produced a Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court and I think eight Supreme Court justices in Minnesota. So you can make fun of it. I don't care. But unless you went to Harvard or Yale, the pedigree of William Mitchell is actually really hard to argue with. <laughs> kind of stupid. It doesn't deserve it, I don't think. It's not that law school and the, the rules have changed quite a bit, the, the unofficial rules. But have at it. Make fun of my school. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, okay, so he went to Albany Law School and University of Rochester. I don't know anything about those schools. Doesn't matter where you go to school. Doesn't matter. It helps with the pedigree for sure. Like if you want to get on the Supreme Court, I hope you went to Harvard these days. That's just how they do it. It's not right. It's not right. Those guys are not the best lawyers in the world just because they went to Harvard. But it means that they built great networks of very influential people. And that's okay. Why am I focusing on this? Sorry, I'm just tangenting off, guys. Let's get back to the task at hand and roast me some more. Hey, counselor, I'm not licensed in Texas. I needed local counsel and hired top-notch law firm. Routine. Great. And the second you filed your motion for ProHack Vice, I would have made a correction video and said, Whoa, just found out Mark Zaid's still on the case. He filed ProHack Vice. Here's how ProHack Vice works. Let me help you. But since I had no indication of it, I went with what uh, what I saw. What I saw was that you were not hired. And I speculated a little bit. Sorry. Sorry, fam. Didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Next, number two, the local Texas firm will waive me in pro hack vice. Do you even understand that term? No. No, I don't. Maybe if you came on my show and explained it, I would. But you didn't. You didn't reply to my email. And then you were salty and and petulant as opposed to just uh, making... You could have made me look dumb by being nice, but you didn't. Instead, you gave me fuel for a live stream that I wasn't planning on doing. Thank you. Rick Nikita says, I come here only because of the tangents. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, nope, don't know what ProHack Vice is. You'll have to come on my show and explain it to me. I will refuse to learn about it. I think I've already explained it. I will refuse. I will unlearn it, sir, until you fix it. All right, now Mark Zaid. Oh, wait. So then sketch therapy. I'm not going to get into this case where he he calls. Uh, um, he starts calling sketch therapy unintelligent and stuff like that. We're, we're going to avoid that because I thought that was a little unbecoming. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't see this salty band. <laughs> Kevin Strange Fiction says, go on the show and debate him about the law then. Hashtag Comicsgate. I think that'd be great. I think if he came on here and we talked about tortious interference, free speech, what the nature of free speech is, what the legal definition and ethos is, he's a free speech guy, we'd probably get along. That's what's so dumb. He had the opportunity to make a good connection and he chose the opposite based on having too big of an ego. Because again, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody has seen me prior to this video make fun of Mark Zaid, Please let me know. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Uh, I think I suggested several times that he was a very, very accomplished attorney and I didn't think Wade could afford him. But that's not an insult. 
Certainly not. Mithrin Emmer says, a big name law school only matters if you want to be a federal judge or work at a big firm as a wage slave. <laughs> uh, here we go. So Halloween AF says, uh, even if you only know what little bit of law you've picked up from comics or TV, you should know that lawyer, that a lawyer is not going to discuss his client in an active case on some Yahoo's YouTube channel. And I replied, nah, just on Twitter, because here he is talking about it on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so then he says, same principle, though. Alter attorneys tend not to discuss specific cases in public, especially active cases, and their clients are advised to do the same. You know that, but whomever suggested a debate probably doesn't. I, I do know that, but I also know that it really depends on your client because some clients do better talking about their case publicly. It just happens. And, and you can't always hinge your client to, the, to your wishes. Uh, you sometimes have to adapt to the client that you have. And if you've got a client who's a public celebrity, they may be much better served by talking about their case and you're not going to stop them either. So trying to ham hamper that might not be in their best interest. It's amazing. It's almost like you have to know your client and recommend what's best for the client. But I, I digress. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, Katharga says, I hope Mr. Zaid gets help for that stroke. <laughs> so then Zaid responds here, Rakeda doesn't know much of anything. How do you know? You've watched one, maybe watched one 10 minute video where I was not privy to facts relevant to it. Having graduated from law school in 2015, he couldn't even comprehend possibility that I would need local counsel in Texas. No, I comprehended the possibility, but due to the circumstances, I came to the conclusion that you were out. I also heard a rumor that you were out and tried to confirm it with you, and you refused to confirm. After inviting me to email you, you didn't respond for almost a week. I figured you were out and didn't want to talk about the case. Perfectly uh, logical in my mind, but again, I don't care. I'm happy to be wrong but didn't stop him from raising all sorts of conspiracy theories on YouTube to push his agenda. <laughs> hey guys, do you want to know what my agenda is? I'll tell you, it's a secret. I want people to watch my videos and subscribe to my channel because they're entertained. That's the agenda. <laughs> Let's see what's next. We got to, oh, we have to go here, I think, to get his follow-up. Um, here we go. The Digga says, Zade is just playing the Sundar card, Baka. Uh-oh, explain that one to me. I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> John Russell, yes, it's having 100K subscribers in the short term and then much beyond, much beyond, much beyond. Because I would love to tell you the wrong thing about Mark Zaid all day, every day. <laughs> Help me make it happen. <laughs> Three, I remain lead counsel in this case and can't wait to pursue it further. I can't wait either. I wish you would have filed an answer by now or a dispositive motion. I wish you would have pursued the case in the deadline time rather than hiring some firm, asking them to do it, and then not mentioning that you're pro-hack vice, not including it on the paperwork, not including it in the discussions or agreement that's listed on the page. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you give that reason? Of They'll still give you the extension. You have no reason. They have no reason not to. They have no reason not to. Even if it's just because Mark Zaid's busy. There's no conspiracy theory, you weirdo. Mithrin Emmer says, he went with the you're an FNG approach. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> All right, next. I, again, when you respond, I get to make a video and make money. Please respond. Do it. I want to cover this case. I want it to go, man, I want it to, I want it to go to trial or something. I want to know the resolution. If this case settles, all we have is speculation. 
if this case goes to trial and Meyer wins, we have we have a hammer and an anvil to forge a new weapon against all of this garbage that you're supporting, you scumbag who says you support free speech. And you're talking about you're talking about shutting down contracts and getting people fired from their jobs because you because of things that they said because you support free speech? That's what your that's your angle here? No, I want it to go. I want them I want Meyer to win. I want him to win bad. I want Wade I want Wade like to be crying constantly about how bad he lost because he ruined a business deal and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of people being deplatformed and thrown offline for words. I'm sick of people interfering with people's ability to make money because they don't like their political opinions. I'm sick of these virtue signaling cucks running around reporting to mom all day long and it's disgusting that you're so vehemently defending it even though I know you have an ethical responsibility to do so. So I can't wait for you to pursue it either. I can't wait. I can't wait. And man, the way you're acting now, boy do I hope that Texas attorney golfs you into oblivion. Whatink! Right off the tee box and into the flippin' ocean with you. Get in the sea, you dummy. I, oh man, I hope he pounds you into sand. Ugh. Oh. Straight into that Libyan soil. Just knock it out. I hope you are... Oh gosh, I hope you lose. Really do. Because... And not against you. I mean, other than this, which is dumb. This is just so silly and small of you that it's funny. It's not small of me because I'm the little guy in the situation. You're the big shot attorney. You framed it that way, you weirdo. You insulted my school. You insulted my knowledge. And I've done nothing prior to this but praise you. What a misread. So now you're the big smart guy. You better win. Because if you lose, I'm going to be dancing on the documents. I'll do the funniest live stream I can think of. I don't even know what I'll do if you lose, but man, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. And I hope you do just so I can gloat in your stupid face for making fun of my school, which is the dumbest and smallest thing you can do. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? How did you misread this so bad? <laughs> <laughs> you had every advantage in the situation. You're the hired guy. You're super famous. And you have a much bigger platform on Twitter and other things. You're not, you don't have time to be a YouTube lawyer. You had every advantage. And instead, you chose to make yourself smaller. What purpose did that have? Didn't they teach you to strategize at your law school? That's what they taught me. Always think of what your opponent's next move would be. I wasn't even thinking you would do this because you weren't my opponent. <laughs> Why would you do this? Okay. Uh, Katherga says, okay, this rant deserves a tip. Props. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Gojira Fai says, fireball, Nick. It's not fireball, but it is gin. Mithrin says, hope he pulls the Mr. Big Shot stuff with the judge. That'll go over well. Yeah. <laughs> guys it's like he picked up the bible highlighted it went to reddit and pulled out a line from the iliad it doesn't make any sense there it's it's a complete misread of this situation it he could have shut me down by being polite and taking a high road and it would have been dead. What would I have done? I would have done a very small, humble video. It says, look, I was wrong about this. Uh, Mark Zaid is still a pra is still lead counsel. Good to know. Here's how ProHack Vice works. Nope. Or he could have ignored it and could have watched me eat crow when he actually filed the ProHack Vice motion. That would have maybe even been funnier. Couldn't do it, could he? Had to squash those conspiracy theories out there. The big conspiracy theory that maybe uh, Wade hired local counsel. 
Watch out. That's dangerous. That'll probably be the next one on Jesse Ventura's show, right? Georgie says, I opened another bottle of vodka after that sick of rant. This is gold, pure gold. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Trey Y says, what a fool. Uh, Lindenall says, in your honest opinion, do you think the case is totally foobar butt effed? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. I think Meyer has a good case. Uh, I think Meyer has a very good case for tortious interference. Now, I think there are risks to this case. As I, I think there are always risks to a case. It's not open and shut. This is a new thing. Um, there's not direct corollaries in, in the research. Otherwise, it would be open and shut. But there's Texas law that strongly support, or Texas case law that strongly supports Meyer's case here. Knox versus, uh, Knox versus Taylor. Knox versus Taylor, a 1999 case in Texas, involved similar, not the same facts. Um, and the, the facts that are similar are, are kind of eerily similar. The facts that are different are actual hurdles. Absolutely. But Knox v. Taylor is a very interesting case. It's in Texas and uh, it'll be an authority. And I would be surprised to see it if it doesn't show up in a motion here. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm bad at law. Maybe they'll have different authorities and they won't think Knox v. Taylor works. Looking at it and I'm writing the case, I'm putting Knox v. Taylor in on Meyer's side. Hands down. I think it's it's the most on point case I've found. Doesn't mean it's the best. I've not paid interns to do a bunch of research on it. And I've researched it for maybe an hour, two hours, something like that in my spare time. So I could be wrong. But no, I think Knox versus Taylor is on point. I think it's going to be wildly persuasive in this case. And uh, I think it's a real problem for Zade and Wade personally. So I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I think Meyer's got a good shot. And I want him to win because we have to have a tool. And uh, we are going to talk about, we're going to talk about Youngbluth and Vox Day in just a little bit um, because Vox Day has brought up tortious interference and I want to clarify something. I want to clarify that Jason Youngbluth has retracted his statement that he claimed uh, victory for the Indiegogo campaign um, being shut down of Alt, -Q Alt Hero Q or whatever. Uh, so that's going to come in a little bit. I'm going to talk about that a little bit because that's the video I was going to do tonight. So anyway, but yes, I want tools against this social justice job lynch mob thing. I want, I want tools where when we have some, uh, some chucklehead, we'll say, uh, calling up a company and getting someone fired because of their political opinion or their beliefs. I want a tool to fight back. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this stuff. So, uh, here we go. Homestead says, conspiracy theory, Mark Zaid acts like an idiot, but works with Nick behind the scenes to make money through super chats. <laughs> That's a good conspiracy theory. Can't confirm nor deny. Mithrin Emrys says, Texas gets weird on tortious interference, but I'd give Myers a slight advantage. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's a weird, tortious interference is a weird claim, especially in this context. But let's not focus on that right now because we need to see the arguments. I've rendered my opinion back in May. I've refined my opinion. I, I still hold on to it recently in my Meyer versus Wade video, uh, which you can find me smugly laughing. Um, you know, I, I think Meyer's got a shot, but we've got to see the arguments. I can't wait for Zade's arguments. I can't wait for an attorney of that caliber to answer. I think it'll be, it'll be as best researched as possible. I have full faith in that. And I want to know the counter re ar argument because I don't have time to spend 10, 15 hours researching every tortious interference case in Texas and putting together a, a brief for it. Mark Zade's going to do that because he's getting paid to. And I will talk about it. And I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. NPCs now. Yes. Sorry. NPCs now. Okay. He has a final tweet here. And what your video does show to everyone is that you have absolutely zero clue about anything relating to this case. I don't think that's right. I have some clue about the case uh, and probably anything regarding comics. That's true. I don't know anything about comics. Fully admit it. 
Zaid? I beat you to that one too. Or the law. I, I guess I don't know anything about the law because I didn't think you were still on his pro hack vice. Solid conclusion there. Deductive reasoning at its finest. That's the only possible conclusion you could come to, Zade. If that's the case, I wish Wade all the best and hope only that he pays you well. <laughs> uh... I should find a day job. I don't want a day job. I want a night job. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm. Hashtag roasted. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else he's got. This three tweets to sketch therapy. Look at how mean this guy is to those. Okay. So sketch therapy says, uh, responds, responds to Zade, who let's remember is such a boomer that he responded to sketch therapy. Not to me. He responded to sketch therapy. Sketch therapy says, I remain astounded that you, a lead counsel in this case, have no idea who you are attacking and can't wait to pursue me further. Mark Zade says, those tweets were not directed at you. I have no idea who you are. It should be obvious to anyone with intelligence that I was referring to the video posted by Nick Riccata. I mean... It should be obvious. Mark, let me give you a pro tip. Mark, if you think it should be obvious and consider yourself intelligent, there are two things. The other person is either not intelligent or maybe you're not being intelligent as your big brain thinks you are. One of those two might be possible. There could be others, but it might be possible that you're not uh, communicating as clearly as you think if other people don't understand you. I don't know. That's on you to figure out. You'll have to mull that one over. Maybe a random person on Twitter had a better read of the situation than you did. Mm. Mm. What do I know? Uh, and then finally... He responds to sketch therapy with whatever. Knock yourself out, my friend. You're on mute. Uh, I won't see a word of what you say. Good luck with life. <laughs> and then a whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. From Owen Wilson and Zoolander. Fantastic. Lazarian444 says, I'd love to see Antarctic go after Wade as well. I, I mean, that'd be funny, but I don't think Antarctic has a claim against Wade. Frankly. Zero Depressive says, aren't you worried that if this goes to trial, Zaid could argue you or other media interfered with the result? Not at all. Nope. Nope. I don't think uh, there's any way he can effectively make that argument. Um, this is not being like broadcast on every Texas news channel or anything like that. Although that'd be funny. They could do that if they pay me for it. But um, but yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not concerned with that at all. I'm not associated with this case in any way. And guys, last I checked, still America, Jack, and we still have free speech and we can still talk about whatever we want until some uh, literal government authority comes and tells us otherwise. So I'm still going to talk about Mark Zaid. I'm still going to talk about talk about this case. And uh, and the only person who can stop me is probably Richard C. Meyer. If he asked me to stop talking about certain things, I probably would because I want him to win. And I don't want anything to impact his legal strategy. But outside of that, I got no reason not to talk about it. Okay. Let's see. Mm. Oh, and someone asked, is this a polished stone drinking vessel? Yes, it is. It is a polished stone drinking vessel. It is from, uh, I got it in Chattanooga, Tennessee at Lookout Mountain. Hope that helps. Mm. Next case. Next case is a good call. Is a good call. Now, 
Uh, I don't have documents for this. Oh, wait. Maybe I do. Uh, Vox Day blog. Vox Populi. This is hard to see. Let me see if I can blow it up a little bit. So, I am planning. I am planning. Hey, what's up, Beck? Uh, I am planning on inviting Vox Day to come on this show. I know a lot of you don't like Vox, and that's okay. Um, I disagree with Vox on a lot of things. He probably has reason to say no to me on coming on this show. However, however, I don't, I am not uh, aligned with anybody in, in any way that would prevent me from talking to someone else, okay? So I want to talk to Vox because no matter what I think about Vox Day's views, I still want him to make money. My video about uh, trademark infringement, I stand by 100%. I think that was a bad move and a misread on Vox's part, okay? So we're absolutely clear on that. I don't think, uh, I think he misread that situation. Now, that said, Vox Day, Arcave and Comics, and Chuck Dixon all potentially lost, uh, I don't know what their split was, but roughly $100,000 from an Indiegogo campaign that was shut down the other day. Okay? And it appears to have been shut down through some sort of interference. They cited a violation of the TOS. Now, I had an interview with John De La Rose. If you haven't watched it, I think you should. I mean, I think you should watch all my videos, but I really enjoyed talking to John. We had a good conversation. Uh, again, I know some of you may not like him, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, but we had a good conversation and we touched on this a little bit. Uh, Indiegogo had actually sent out an email to Chuck Dixon, from what I understand, talking about the payment that they were going to make. So, I mean, they're saying, we're sending you your $100,000 or whatever. It's coming. Watch for the check. And then they canceled the campaign after that. So, I mean, we're talking really really uh, curious if that amounts to interference of the contract. And we don't have enough facts, I don't think. So, um, so I'm going to be inviting Vox on the show to talk about this. I don't know if he's going to say yes. I don't know if he'll ever even respond, right? No reason to, other than to have a conversation. Uh, and I will treat him with dignity and respect, even while disagreeing with some of his ideas and strategies. That's okay. That's what life's about. Can you spell tortious? I want to read this. is a very short post. We're going to read it, and then we're going to talk about the recent event. Can you spell tortious? As in tortious interference. It looks like the legal, legal legion of evil has at least one additional party to investigate. And he quotes Jason Youngbluth. It says, what am I but hurt about exactly? I got Vox Day's Indiegogo campaign canceled and now is worried it, it it's going to blow back up or blow back on him. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, so then his next part is one, the existence of a contractual relationship or beneficial business relationship between two parties. Two, knowledge of that relationship by a third party. Three, intent of the third party to induce a party to the relationship to breach the relationship. Four, lack of any privilege on the part of the third party to induce such breach. Five, contractual relationship is breached. Six, damage to the party against whom the breach occurs. He has laid out uh, the elements of tortious interference very succinctly. That's all the blog post says. Now, he is referring to this uh, Jason Youngblith tweet. I need to be open and honest with you guys. Jason asked me not to talk about this. He wants it to vanish and disappear. Uh, Jason has retracted this statement and said he is not responsible for the Indiegogo campaign of Vox Day being shut down. 
I fully understand why he would retract such a silly statement to make in his week-long tirade about being the coolest debater on the planet. But it appears that that was all just puffery. And when it got real, Jason Youngbluth said, oh, wait a minute. I realize how this makes me look and I really don't want to get sued by Vox Day. So he has retracted that statement. Now, I don't know. I don't know anything about who contacted Indiegogo. I don't know anything about what Indiegogo said. Uh, they just have cited, as far as I know, that it's a terms of service violation and they haven't expressed what term of service or what the violation was or what specific action it was or how they got the information on an already funded project. But it appears that Youngbluth was just lying about being important and now is saying that he wasn't involved at all. So take that as you will. Uh, he asked me not to talk about it. I said, you know, I don't really respond. I don't know how I should respond to someone who has spent a week maligning me as an alcoholic on Twitter. Because uh, that's what he's done for a straight week. So my plan, however, was to do a separate video on this tonight prior to Mark Zaid. Um, but we're here. You guys are watching. Figured I'd throw this in at the end. I'm not going to do a separate video on it. I will still talk to Vox about it uh, because it is an interesting legal issue. And I think uh, that, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> What is it? The carriage man is coming. The carriage man is coming for all these people who brag about getting people fired and brag about ruining contracts. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we got. Um, Trey Y says another complete effing tool. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's one way to look at it. Uh, Clay Early, you bought whiskey specifically to have it for my streams? Good, buddy. Good. Well, guys, I mean, that's about, that's about all I got. It's late. I wasn't expecting to do this. I was not expecting to have a stream tonight. Um, not that I was opposed. I just didn't have a stream worthy subject. I thought until Mark Zaid showed up and here we are. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Please get people who are interested in legal topics to subscribe. The more diverse the audience, the more diverse the topics. And I, I mean, I love covering the comic stuff because it's making me want to buy comics again for the first time in forever. Uh, talking about the creative process is great. And I think the comics gate front is one of the, I think it's the biggest front in free speech right now in America. So I definitely want to be talking about it a lot. But there are other interesting legal issues out there. I'm happy to find and talk about them. So please uh, please share this stuff and, and let people know. Um, I've been at this for almost a year. And I'm very happy with how growth has gone. And uh, I want to keep producing content that you guys want to keep seeing. So you help me do that by just uh, giving me good feedback. And I will help you do that by telling you... Uh, telling you what I think Pro producing the shows. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up <laughs> for the night. Thank you again for watching. Uh, love, love having streams this size and an active chat. So we'll talk to you all soon. Uh, in the meanwhile, go support your independent creators, of course, um, in any way that you can, because we've got to break the traditional mold of, uh, of media distribution. It's got to go. It's done. It's, it's older than Mark Wade and it needs to die. So you guys have a good night. I'm going to blank out the stream. And when it goes blank on my screen, I will close it. So there's no weird audio issues. Peace.